welcome back to Software Unboxed. Windows 11, apparently that's the thing, and some of you have been trying out the leaked ISO, and of course quite a few YouTubers have also taken it for a spin. Now, we hadn't planned on making a video just yet, instead we thought it was probably best to wait until it was officially released before we do any serious benchmarking. But with so many others having already benchmarked Windows 11 with very mixed results, some of you have asked us to take a look to see what the deal is. So this is our Windows 11 preview, and it is well worth noting that this is a leaked version of Windows, it's not the final thing, and therefore performance numbers are subject to change. Today's video sponsor is Gigabyte and their exciting new range of AMD X570S motherboards. These new models do away with the chipset fan for quieter operation, they include huge VRM heatsinks and even better VRM components. And that means these new Gigabyte X570S motherboards will handle any and all AMD Ryzen processors with ease. The new X570S Aorus Master model is particularly impressive, featuring a better cooling design, board layout, and feature set. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. So I've downloaded the ISO, made the necessary modifications so that it can be installed on our test system, and then spent a day setting everything up, and then another day testing. So far, stability's been excellent, not a single crash, and everything's worked. I have to admit though, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the, I suppose you'd call it Mac OS-like look that Microsoft has gone for, but it's not a big deal, and I'm sure you're about to customize the appearance to suit your preferences. Anyway, I'm not gonna dive into all the changes. What I'm interested in for this video is the performance. So, is Windows 11 faster, slower, or the same as Windows 10? To find out, I've tested both AMD and Intel platforms using the exact same software and hardware. Of course, when it comes to the software, the operating systems are different, but things like display drivers and chipset drivers are the same. The Windows 10 drivers are compatible with Windows 11. And then of course, all of the data that you're about to see is fresh. On that note, timing-wise, this actually worked out really well for us as I just finished testing the Core i7-11700 and Ryzen 7 5800X using the exact same hardware with the latest version of Windows 10. So given that all this data is fresh, I took those configurations and then installed Windows 11 for a retest. This means for all the testing, I'm using 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 CL14 dual channel single rank memory, the Noctua NHD15 for cooling, and then for the graphics card, the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Gaming OC. The RTX 3070 was used for reasons that made sense for the original testing, but it'll work just fine here for the gaming benchmarks as well. Okay, let's get into the graphs. And right off the bat, I'll admit, this won't be the most interesting set of benchmarks I've ever put out, at least in terms of performance margins. Again, I have seen benchmarks from other people and other media outlets claiming 5%, 10%, 15%, and even 20% or more extra performance with Windows 11. Sadly though, for those of you running the latest AMD and Intel desktop CPUs, it doesn't look like the upcoming Microsoft operating system will net you any extra performance. Running Cinebench R23 appears to reveal the exact same level of CPU performance for both Rocket Lake and Zen 3 processors. Moving on to 7-zip, and I should just point out that I'm not going to bother talking about most of the performance margins for this application or the other upcoming applications, as spoiler alert, they're all quite insignificant. So rather than blab on about meaningless percentages, I'm just going to show the percentage difference on the graphs. So in the case of 7-zip, we're looking at no more than a 1% margin between the two operating systems. It's also the same story when running the Blender Open Data benchmark, which is highly repetitive and extremely accurate. So in short, no change in performance here. We see the same thing with the Adobe software. Doesn't really matter if it's Photoshop, After Effects, or Premiere Pro, we're looking at identical performance using either operating system. DaVinci Resolve Studio 16 provides us with by far our biggest margin yet, Windows 11 was 3% slower when using the Core i7-11700, though we do see no change with the Ryzen 7 5800X. Although the data is based on a 3-run average, I'd still allow for a 1% margin of error, and that means at most we could be looking at a 1% difference between the two operating systems when using the Core i7 processor. Either way though, 3% is still a meaningless margin. Okay, now time for the gaming benchmarks, which is what I'm sure most of you have come here for. And unfortunately, there's nothing exciting to see here either. 
Across the eight games tested, we're looking at no more than a 1% variation in performance between the two operating systems. And I have to say, it is quite remarkable how similar the two installs are, though ultimately it's probably not that surprising. It is rare that we see noteworthy performance improvements for existing hardware when Microsoft releases a major OS update. And in the past, we have seen a number of false claims of big performance gains, but they rarely hold up when properly investigated. It's unclear what changes have been made with Windows 11 that could improve system performance. And if any such changes have been made, we have no idea which hardware configurations they're targeting. So there you have it. The leaked version of Windows 11 appears to be basically identical to Windows 10 in terms of performance, at least with the Core i7 11700 and Ryzen 7 5800X. Again, I'm aware that there are benchmarks out there claiming 5%, 10%, and even greater performance gains with Windows 11. And while it might be true for certain hardware configurations, it wasn't for the ones we tested. I've heard stuff like Windows 11 is faster than its predecessor due to a new scheduling update but we've heard talk of scheduling updates in the past that have amounted to very little in the way of extra performance. It's also possible that core heavy CPUs might see an improvement as we haven't tested that, but I kind of doubt it. I think Windows 10 was pretty well optimized for parts like Threadripper at this point. And I've also heard that Windows 11 will bring optimized scheduling improvements for hybrid CPUs featuring big and small cores, which certainly makes sense. New unreleased hardware often calls for software updates but those will come in the future. Windows 11 is meant to be more lightweight when compared to 10, and that does seem to be true, but at least for the configurations I've tested here, it didn't really lead to any extra performance. Still, it's possible that for lower end systems, Windows 11 might provide a bit of breathing room, and perhaps that's something worth exploring when it's officially released. Of course, there are other performance related benchmarks that we could have run targeting stuff like storage and boot times, but for this initial testing, this preview if you will, I just wanted to focus on application and gaming benchmarks. As far as I can tell though, Windows 11 is just a new build of Windows 10, and it really could have been just that. We know that originally it was Microsoft's intention to stick with Windows 10 and make incremental updates over time, which they have been doing since its release. After all, Windows 10 looks quite a bit different in 2021 than it did in 2015. And it seems like to me, with the way things have been over the past year and a half, you know, global pandemic and all that, Microsoft is looking to spice things up a bit and rather than just release another major Windows 10 update, they're grabbing headlines with the unexpected Windows 11 story. For now, I don't really have much more to say about the performance of Windows 11. Again, do consider this to be a preview, though I don't expect the official version to be much different in terms of performance, at least for the configurations tested here. But if it is, you can rest assured that you will see an updated video from us. Until then, you can subscribe for more hardware unboxed content. And if you'd like to join our exclusive community of tech enthusiasts, then you can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. Get you access to some pretty cool perks and you're also helping to support the channel as well. But you will get stuff like our exclusive Discord server where you can talk with the rest of the Harbour Unbox community about stuff like Windows 11, behind the scenes content, Q&As, and Tim and I also do a live stream for Harbour Unbox community members each month. So yeah, pretty cool stuff there. If you're interested, as I said, check out the links in the video description. If not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.